Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Welcome to Fahad's tutorial once again. And I'm gonna explain one of the best chapter of chemistry, especially SSC chemistry. And the title of the chapter itself, the chemistry, which is chemistry and energy. That I'm sequentially uploading all the chapters before. And this is the eighth chapter of the SSC Chemistry English Version Syllabus and student of uh, English Version Scattered College from anywhere you are watching this tutorial think consider this chapter as one of the best chapter so what are the main content of this chapter I have written 10 but actually actually this specific contents it means there are a lot of things and a lot of mathematical problems I have written here only one single word is del H that is the, the, the amount of heat which is changing in case of reactions but you know there are number of mathematical problems that we need to solve it so now you see the main content of this chapter is chemical energy we need to think about del H we need to know about the calculations of heat energy so in this tutorial I shall be focused on this two part because this is some sort of like introductions that is written on your book. I hope if you read it, then you understand what is the differences between chemical energy and the bond energy. In my fifth chapter that I explained about chemical bond, can you remember that we started about ionic bond, covalent bond and metallic bond? And now in this tutorial, I'm thinking about, I'm talking about the bond energy. I'm talking about the chemical energy. So here are some differences between the chemical energy and the bond energy and I hope if you read the first two pages of your book you'll definitely get it. And then del H, the calculations of heat change, the use of chemical energy itself is so big and we need to discuss it in an elaborative way. Then most interesting part has begun that is electrochemical cells, electrolysis and the galvanic cell and you know this topic are very very common and we should not we should not skip any of any of the content from here and you see that electrochemical cells we need to know about electrolytic cells and galvanic cell we need to know clearly what are the main differences between these two cells and of course when you think about a galvanic cell we need to know about salt breeze why salt breeze is used and what is the function of salt breeze dry cell and of course in case of dry cell we need to know that what is the structure of dry cell and what are the reactions is going on inside and how it's producing electricity we need to think about the nuclear reactions it's a huge work a huge things nuclear reactions nuclear chain reactions nuclear reactor so some important things will be discussed here and then the last of things is the generation of or generating electricity so think about this chapter deals about self chemistry and energy and this is most important so this is the first class that i'm, I'm just focusing on two words that is del H and the calculation of heat and next video I shall be explaining about how to calculate the del H when bond energy will be given before going to explain I'll write two slides first things is del H when we will think about del H one thing is important for us that is it is E2 minus E1 okay just 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 think u2 minus e1 and then del h in case of bond energy is b1 minus b2 okay i'm coming up with the idea why this is like that and i'm just rewriting it here and i will explain it what's the what's the reason behind it so we know based on uh, the temperature uh, based on the heat changes in the chemical reaction chapter that in the previous chapter we say that the reactions are two types exothermic and endothermic so exothermic reactions are those where heat evolves okay that means heat will evolves after the reactions so that is exothermic but in case of endothermic that is in, in the medium of reactions 
energy will absorb the heat will be absorbed so exothermic heat evolving endothermic heat absorbing so the differences comes from where think about one thing suppose methane methane is burning with the presence of oxygen and it's producing carbon dioxide and water okay another thing think about a very common uh, reactions like you know dry lime that is calcium oxide okay if I mix with water this is very well known that it will produce lime water and think about the production of lime water what is the actual scenario like it's evolving heat it means that after the reactions of dry lime and water when lime water is producing on the meantime heat is also producing that means this is actually an exothermic reaction so how do i think that either what is e1 e2 and what is b1 b2 coming up think about methane methane is burning so burning of what and burning for what like methane is working i mean the methane is reacting with oxygen and that is after production of carbon dioxide and water it produces heat so that is that is the example of exothermic reaction now you think the internal energy of the reactant and product what are the internal energy of reactant and product if I say that the internal energy of the reactant is denoted as E1 and the internal energy as E2 then we must think one thing is that in exothermic reaction as after production of lime water as heat is evolving it means that the internal energy the internal energy here in this case from this one E2 is so high that means total internal energy of reactant and total internal energy of product if the internal energy of E1 is not high from where this heat is producing it means that in case of exothermic reaction when I say this, that del H is actually E2 minus E1 we must know that this internal energy of reactant in case of exothermic reaction is definitely higher than the E2 as because this evolving heat is coming after from this reactant so that is why E1 is definitely higher than E2 and then when I got del H E2 minus E1 as we know that E1 is bigger than E2 and I'm definitely deducting E2 from E1 then it would be like minus so it would be like minus kilojoule per mole so in case of exothermic reaction the value of D, del H would be negative <clears throat> and in case of endothermic reaction like endothermic reaction means suppose nitrogen and oxygen is reacting and they are producing nitric oxide here you know that again 180.6 kilojoule heat was required this is an endothermic reaction so now you think the internal energy of E1 in the reactant is definitely less than this, the internal energy of the product that means if it is E1 and if it is E2 the E2 is definitely greater than E1 why? because this amount of heat is required with the reactant to produce this so if I am if I just omit this amount of heat, you think about it, the internal energy is definitely less. So the endothermic reactions, when it is absorbing heat, 
so as here is this amount of heat is required so after adding this amount of heat this reaction is going on so that is why the total internal energy of the endothermic reactions in case of endothermic reactions the total internal energy of reactant is less than the product and then if I say that del H del H E2 minus E1 so E2 is bigger so the value is plus the value is plus so what is the main main topic like so the explanation comes up like that the explanations comes up like that in case of exothermic exothermic right in exothermic reaction the del H is negative as because E1 E1 is less than sorry is greater than E2 because the total internal energy of reactant is greater than the total internal energy of product because when the reactant is reacting then after productions of the product heat is evolving so as heat is evolving so the internal energy of reactant is higher than the product and then when I do the E2 minus E1 so I'm deducting the higher value from the lower value so the value should be minus and in case of endothermic reaction in case of endothermic reaction del H is plus because E1 is less than E2 E1 is less than E2 now you think about previously what was happening like methane and oxygen is producing carbon dioxide plus water okay now think about the bound energy I said it earlier that here the total internal energy is higher as because this is an exothermic reaction so this is the reactant now if you think about the bond so the formation of bond is this is this and this is actually this and then the production is like that two molecule of water okay now you think what is b1 and b2 so the b1 is the bond energy of reactant and b2 is the bond energy of the product in other way we can say when methane and oxygen will reacting each other so the bond between this carbon hydrogen carbon hydrogen and oxygen will be breaking down and this bond will form and according to the chemistry knowledge what we know when new bond is formed then energy released okay that means this C bond H, C bond H, C bond H and C bond H that means 4 moles of C bond H is breaking down and 2 mole of oxygen is also breaking down so as it's breaking down so it requires some energy and that energy is V1 the bond energy and whenever I'm saying that these bonds are forming they are creating bond and when they're forming this carbon oxygen and oxygen hydrogen they release heat as it is exothermic reaction so the released energy that means B2 is definitely higher than B1 and then when I get del H is B1 minus B2 so as B2 is higher in exothermic reaction I am again getting the del H minus that is why in case of total internal energy the del H is equal to E2 minus E1 as because 
e2 minus e1 is negative as because the total internal energy of reactant is higher than the total internal energy of product in exothermic reaction that is totally reverse in the bond energy concept because in case of bond energy in exothermic reaction as the concept is exothermic reaction is evolving heat so the bond energy of the reactant will be less than the bond energy of product as when new bond is forming energy is released as i said this is exothermic reaction so energy is released so value of b2 the bond energy of product is higher than the bond energy of reactant so b1 minus b2 is negative so i hope i can make you understand if you just see this tutorial totally or even if you don't find any I mean, if you feel like that okay nothing is clear then think about it again why e1 and e2 and why b1 and b2 is reversive in finding the calculation of del h e2 minus e1 e1 is the total internal energy of react product i mean sorry reactant so when e1 is greater than e2 as in, in case of exothermic reaction so when i'm deducting e2 minus e1 it's definitely minus so two important thing you must remember del h would be negative in exothermic reaction del h would be positive in endothermic reaction so what is exothermic reaction when heat is evolving what is endothermic reaction when heat is absorbing so I hope I can make you clear in this very first video. In the next video that I'm coming up with the calculation of bond energy because this is, oh sorry, calculation of heat energy or bond energy. This is very important because in a question paper, this type of question is really, really common. And you must do it without any flaws or mistake. So understanding the concept of this chapter is important. So when you read, Try to understand what you are reading and that is why I'm thinking to upload this class the first time to know why this is and why this is. So that is why I wrote it earlier that del H is equal to E2 minus E1 and B1 minus B2. So take care, stay well and do let me know in the comment sections do you really understand the videos or tutorials, do you understand that what I'm explaining or whatever you need. So see you in the next class. Take care.